This is the first footage ever recorded from space. At first, it looks mundane, a grainy, black and white view of Earth rotating beneath the camera. You remember your childhood toy globes spinning at your fingertips, same slow, gentle motion, but then the frame tilts, the image warps, and suddenly you realize you're not watching the Earth, you're leaving it. That moment, that gut-clenching lurch is pure, unfiltered terror. It's not the fear of falling or crashing, it's the fear of being forgotten, of drifting so far that even light can't reach you. Imagine being dropped into a bottomless ocean without a weight to anchor you. Only in space, there is no water, no sound, no support, just void. And in that void, something awakens. The realization that everything you know, your body, your home, your species, are all just particles flung into an ocean of nothingness. This footage isn't majestic, it's a mirror, showing you the cold face of the universe. We like to think of space as calm, silent, beautiful. But step beyond the comforting glow of city lights, look up at the night sky, and you're peering into a realm that eats perspective. Astronauts tell of a disorienting overview effect, a shift in consciousness when they see Earth from orbit. They report a sense of unity, of awe, but they also speak of a subtle panic when the planet shrinks until it's no larger than a marble tossed into an infinite well. Because out there, there is nothing. No air, no warmth, no sound. Just a relentless ocean of vacuum that stretches for trillions of miles. Imagine breathing only to realize there is no air. Imagine a heartbeat, only to realize there is no ground. The human mind recoils at the thought. It's easier to dream of dragons than to imagine the pure, sterile emptiness of space. Dragons at least have shape and fire. Space has none. Let's bring our feet back down to planets, but not Earth. I'm talking about the gas giants, worlds so extreme they defy imagination. Jupiter is over 300 times the mass of Earth. You cannot stand on it. There is no surface, only layers of crushing gas that grow denser with every meter you descend. Drop a probe and it will plunge for days, crushed, shredded, melted, until nothing remains but vapor. And that's before you meet the great red spot, a hurricane raging for at least 400 years, twice the diameter of our entire planet. If it were to travel across the Pacific Ocean, it would swallow every country in its path, unseen, unstoppable, unending. Then there's Saturn with its polar hexagon storm, six sides of wind whisking at 400 miles per hour, trapped in a frozen dance. And Neptune, whose winds scream at 1,200 miles per hour, powerful enough to tear a human limb from limb in a fraction of a second. We think of Earth's storms as formidable. These giants laugh in their faces. They are not weather. They are forces of nature unbridled. Our sun, our life giver, is in the cosmic scale a mere spark. It's true, you could stuff one million Earths inside the sun, Yet that spark is barely a flicker compared to the behemoths lurking in the galaxy. Consider UI Scuti, a red supergiant so vast that if you replaced the sun with UI Scuti, its surface would swallow Mars, Jupiter, and almost reach Saturn. The orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars would disappear into its core. Close your eyes. Picture a ball of gas larger than our solar system, a ball of fire so immense it makes our star look like a candle. The word giant doesn't begin to cover it. It's like calling Mount Everest a hill. And those stars, they don't just shine, they burn. Their cores fuse atoms under pressure so immense that they forge the building blocks of life and tear them apart in supernovae that for weeks radiate more energy than an entire galaxy. But if UI Scuti is a stadium, there are arenas beyond it. Beyond the brightest stars, gravity reigns supreme. Enter the black hole, an object so dense that nothing can escape, not even light. Its gravity warps time and space like taffy being stretched. Tone 618, 
is one of the heaviest known black holes 66 billion times the mass of our Sun. Its event horizon spans more miles than the distance between Earth and Pluto. Step beyond that horizon and you enter a realm where seconds stretch into eons and the laws of physics crumble. Time stops, space collapses, everything you know vanishes. Millions of supermassive black holes lurk at the centers of galaxies, feasting on gas and stars. They are silent, invisible predators. An entire galaxy's worth of matter compressed into a point with infinite density. But you might think black holes are the scariest things out there. Then meet the void. Black holes are the predators of space. The void is the purest horror. The Boötes void is a bubble of nothingness, measuring 330 million light years across. Inside, practically nothing, fewer than 60 galaxies in an area where you'd expect 10,000. It accounts for 2% of the observable universe, and yet it is entirely empty. Imagine stepping into that void. No light, no galaxies, no stars, just blind darkness. Not like the night sky you're used to, this is an absence so complete that it feels tangible. It is the closest thing to pure nothing that exists, and it spans hundreds of millions of light years. As if that weren't enough, the universe itself is pulling away. Right now, every galaxy is moving away from every other galaxy. The universe is stretching like a rubber sheet, and the farther a galaxy is, the faster it recedes. Eventually, distant galaxies will disappear from view forever not because they vanished, but because their light will never reach us. In a few billion years, the night sky will darken. No more Andromeda, no more Triangulum, just the Milky Way, shrinking to a lone, isolated island of stars. Then even the Milky Way's neighbors, our satellite galaxies, will fade. Future astronomers will look out and see only their own galaxy, convinced the universe began there and there ends. We were born at the perfect time, a fleeting moment when the cosmos is still visible. But that moment is slipping away, faster than you can imagine. If the universe abandons us, some things will endure, though even they will fade. Every cosmic object has a lifespan. Stars burn their fuel, planets cool, galaxies collide. Yet three objects will outlast almost everything. White dwarfs. The ember-like cores left behind when medium-sized stars die. These are roughly the size of Earth but hold half a sun's mass. They emit a faint dying glow that can last trillions of years. Black holes, the ultimate survivors. They vanish only through Hawking radiation, a quantum process so slow it will take around 10 to the 100 years, a Google years, for a typical black hole to evaporate. Black dwarfs theoretical end state of white dwarfs after they cool completely. They give off virtually no heat or light, and in the cold, dark universe of the future, they will be the only objects to glimmer faintly in the void. White dwarfs may twinkle for quadrillions of years, black holes may last for Google years, but black dwarfs will endure for an almost inconceivable 10 to the 32,000 years. Those are not numbers. They are statements. The universe is patient, or rather, it has no choice but to be. And when even these survivors meet their end, imagine a universe where every star has died, every galaxy has faded, every black hole has evaporated. The only objects left are black dwarfs, cold, dark, solitary. And then, in a moment of quantum chance, a one black dwarf collapses, reigniting fusion and erupting in a supernova. A single pinpoint of light blazing in the endless black, a cosmic flare that outshines the last supernovae of the past. After the last supernova, there will be silence. Not figurative silence, literal, total, complete silence. This scenario is known as the heat death of the universe, a state where all energy is uniformly distributed and no work can be done. No stars, no life, no change, no time, as in thermodynamic gradients vanish, entropy reaches its maximum. The universe becomes a cold, dark, featureless expanse, infinite in extent, yet incapable of doing anything, a frozen grave. This is the universe's final chapter, a canvas of absolute nothingness painted in black. But in this grave of stars, 
There lies a poignant truth. From the first spark of the Big Bang, the universe has been patient. It waited 380,000 years for the first atoms to form. It waited 100 million years for the first stars to ignite. It waited 9 billion years for our sun to burst into life. It waited 4.6 billion years for Earth to cool and life to arise. It waited countless eons for you to exist, to read these words, to wonder at the cosmos. And it will wait again. 10 to the 32,000 years for black dwarfs to flicker. 10 to the 100 years for black holes to fade. And forever for any possibility beyond that final supernova. Because the universe has no master plan. No janitor to sweep away the emptiness. No clock to strike the final hour. It simply is an indifferent stage for every cosmic drama, grand or trivial. A sea of stars, storms, and black holes. A tapestry of light and shadow shadow, birth, and death. And when the last black dwarf explodes, the universe will have completed its solitary performance. There will be no audience left, no echo of applause, just the memory of light fading into the ultimate night. But perhaps that is the most profound truth of all. The universe didn't create us for a purpose. It didn't pause for our entertainment. It never cared whether we watched or not. It simply waited, patient, infinite, and inevitable. So next time you look up at the night sky, remember, you are a fleeting flicker in a grand cosmic theater. You are a story told in a single breath of time. And that is the terrifying, humbling, and awe-inspiring reality of space and time.